So I'm Scott Mumford. I'm the Extension Peanut Agronomist with the University of Georgia. And to this year, in 2024, we're sitting with a pretty decent crop, although growers have kind of been on a roller coaster ride. And I've used that analogy quite a few times in meetings because it seems like that's what we're always on. Uh, this year's no different. However, we've had some things that, that are gonna lead up to whether or not this crop's gonna be a, an average crop or above average crop. And, and a lot of that's related to the weather that we dealt with earlier in the season. We're sitting here in the first part of September and behind me these peanuts look pretty good because they're irrigated one but we also been getting a few showers lately. But at this point in time we have such a very you know a highly variable crop throughout the state of Georgia and I will say this is one of the largest crops that we've had in the state of Georgia in quite a few years. We're sitting at 841,000 acres so just in, in that amount of acres, we're gonna see a lot of differences throughout the crop without the weather as part of that. But this year, the other crops are not bringing as much as far as prices per, per uh, pound or, or prices per bushel. And so growers are leaning on peanut in order to make a, a, a crop and to make a living this year and be, be productive. And so we're trying to do everything we can to make sure that this crop that we get every pound that we can and to get the grade as high as we can. And so to go to understand some of what we're dealing with, you have to go back to when we started planting. We started planting this year in early April. And from early April to the first week of May, I, I would say that we had optimal conditions for planting. They were a little bit cold. We usually see that in, in April. But for the most part, we were getting into a situation where the, the weather was just perfect for planting and when we put the seed in the ground, they come up and we had good stands. Now, once we got to the second week of May, we continued to plant. However, we started getting some rain showers and by the third week of, of well, by the end of the second week of, of May, those rain showers were so close together and for so long that it stopped planting in, a, in probably about 75 to 80% of the state for about three weeks. And that kind of hurt us a little bit because it, it caused us to miss our sweet spot. And when I say sweet spot, I mean that's the prime planting time to miss some of the tomato spotted wilt issues that we normally have, but also it's the highest yielding time. And so with growers missing that, it pushed a majority of the crop back into the last week of, of May going into the end of June. And that's something we don't wanna see with that many acres. Um, even though we did get to plant the first week of May, some of those had to come up or try to come up through that initial starting of the rain and all, and, and some of those had to be replanted. And so as we got into, you know, going through the rain and trying to start back planting, we were still getting rainfall and we had to replant a bunch of this crop. And that also hurt us. And I, I've said this several times to some of the stakeholders out there that if you went by the tractor, how many acres the tractor planted, I would think we planted over a million acres. And that may be a little bit overstated, but what I'm trying to say is we had to replant a lot. And that does mess us up a little bit when we're talking about trying to get this crop, one, matured out, but also getting it, um, getting it harvested. And so that's what we're sitting here now we're just starting to get the April planted out of the ground and get it to the buying points and start to get it graded to see what kind of crop we have. And so far, we look okay. I think the grades are gonna turn out better than normal, than especially the better than we had last year. The yields look really well right now, uh, but that's not what I'm worried about. I'm really worried about that mid-May uh, planted crop. And that's what we're trying to work with everybody throughout the state to make sure that we look at the fields that planted normally and come up normally versus those that planted and we had to replant them one or two times. And so those, those are gonna mature out a little bit differently. And so we're trying to keep the growers at least ahead of the game here. And hopefully they're gonna work with their county agents or their consultants to make sure that we get this crop matured out as good as possible. And just because I told some people yesterday just because the leading edge of the peanuts are mature, we need to look at the whole profile because some of these profiles are stretched out and we need to get all of them matured out as close as possible before we pull the trigger. And what does that entail? Well, if all things are great, 
We can hold them in the ground longer than what we normally do in order to mature them out. But what we're dealing with throughout the state is disease, tomato spotted wilt, and then what is the rainfall over the next month going to be like. And so we have to take all those into account when we start to tell growers either to hold them a little bit longer or to go ahead and start digging. 